What's up guys? Welcome back to GH Poker. And as you can see, we are here in an empty home. I had said previously that I was going to revamp the bankroll and we were going to definitely refund it as I had to use a lot of that money for expenses moving and for other family things. Although that's not how you're supposed to treat your bankroll, we are on a new path here in 2023 and that path is to the moon. Hopefully I can hitch a ride with Elon Musk, but if not, I'll get there somehow. So after last session, we lost as you could see. We got into some sticky spots that we put ourselves in and in the month of January, I decided to go out on a limb and play some tournaments that didn't turn out well. So our bankroll is severely depleted. Although I could just continue playing with it, I think that that's gonna put a little bit more stress and pressure on me and the likelihood of us going broke is going to increase. I was going to use this property as a possible rental, but after some discussion and being so far away and not really wanting to hire a property manager, I decided to list it for sale and we accepted a contract and now I'm going to take that money and buy poker chips. I'm gonna buy as many as I can and then head out to the World Series and buy into every tournament that I can. No, I am not that much of a degenerate, not yet. What I'm going to do is take a portion of that money, refund our bankroll, get more strict on ourselves, definitely use some of that money for the poker coaching, and also take the rest of it, invest it, and use it when we decide to buy a home in Texas so that we have a nice enough down payment that we don't have to worry about anything. Now, so to conclude in the month of January, we didn't quite reach our goal of three to 5,000. February is a new month. That cash game session was the last of January. And going forward, I'm going to ask the community in our community tab here on YouTube, a question as to how you want me to formulate the blogs going forward. And so be on the lookout for that as I want to know your guys' input. Don't worry, we're really close to 1,000 subscribers, which really isn't the reason I do this, but it's a really cool mark. So if you could definitely like and share this video, let's, let's grow the channel as big as we can. Let's grow this community and learn and understand poker, which brings me to the idea that our Discord is coming once I go back home, hence the hoodie, it's cold in the north, not in the south. We are headed back to Texas. Once I get there, I'm going to be able to figure out how to start the Discord and invite you guys. And then there'll always be a link in the videos for anyone who wants to join the Discord. The last thing I talked about in the other video was that I was gonna have a surprise for you guys and I wanna give back. So that's coming soon, just wait. We're probably not gonna start that until I have some more time cleared. But I also wanna say that in the month of February, we are gonna be grinding a lot more, which is why I might change the style of vlogs that I do. Not in the sense of not doing hands, but just rather than trying to vlog every single session, we may just report some of the sessions and skip and just give you guys the good juicy stuff and or stuff that's interesting, stuff that we can learn from. With all that being said, let's go ahead and hop in to a little bit of action from a session I played at a new poker club here in Houston. Well, here, I'm not there. But you know what I'm saying. Anyways, to a, damn it, a, to a new poker club that opened up in Houston, Texas called River Room Poker. I really hope that they jump off. So let's head over, get into some of that action, and then always stay tuned and hit that notifications bell so that when I'm posting, asking the community questions and, and how we want to proceed, you guys can answer and that way I can have good enough feedback so that I don't disappoint the masses. God forbid I disappoint the, anybody. No, it's like, I don't really care. I guess I just uh, really want you guys to be a part of, uh, you know, the questions that I ask, you know. Anyways, I'll see you guys at the end. I'm at River Room playing 1-2 No Limit Hold'em with no Omaha. Let's start by saying I missed recording quite a bit of the session. Original buy-in was $220. Lost a $230 pot with Kings versus Queen 8. Add it on for $300. In for a total of $520. Win a few pots and we're going to go over this hand. I'm in the hijack and look down at Ace 4 of Clubs. There is a button straddle by a well-known pro and poker vlogger here in Houston, Andrew Voden. There are two calls and in the hijack I raise it to $16. 
It folds to Andrew on the button and he decides to 3-bet me to $48. It folds back around to me and playing about 250 big blinds effective, this hand could be a 4-bet bluff or a call. I elect to just call here and we go heads up to a flop that is 4 spades, 5 of clubs, 8 of clubs. Very nice flop. As customary, I check to the 3-better. He decides to continuation bet for $50. I am never folding this flop to a half pot bet, but I pause because I think this is for sure a possible check raise spot, but it's very possible we are still behind here, so I just go ahead and make the call. The turn is another beautiful four of diamonds. I check once again, but he slows down and checks back. The river is a two of clubs, not exactly the card I wanted to see, because my opponent could have put me on a flush draw that just got there. I can't let this go check check though, so I go ahead and lead out for $100, and unfortunately, he makes the fold, and I'm pretty sure in this hand he had pocket queens, which is a stellar play um, by him in this situation, as I probably would have been at least calling one bet on the river. In this next hand, I look down at pocket queens in the small blind. There's one limp, an unknown player in the hijack now raises to $15. So far, a small read on this player is that he may overplay his stronger hands. It's on me and I'm going to three bet out of position and I wanna go a little bit larger so I raise the $50. Everyone folds, our opponent makes the call and we are going heads up to a flop that is queen, jack, seven, rainbow nice he didn't four bet so i am ruling out any aces kings or ace king also unlikely he holds any queens at this point i feel like i am so far out ahead i don't think i can get three streets of value so i check and he checks back the turn comes the ten of hearts completing the rainbow i need to start betting this card brings in some straights and two pair combos he might hold i bet fifty dollars an opponent almost instantly calls the river completely eliminates any possibility of him winning when the queen of diamonds comes off quad queens again i take some time trying to decide what his possible holdings are and my bet size i feel like this is a great opportunity to make my bet very polarizing especially after i check flop bet half pot on turn and now i decide to bet 200 dollars on the river the opponent goes deep into the tank I'm praying to the poker gods for a call. But of course, he makes the correct fold, and I have to show quads for the camera, and the opponent then claims he had jack-10 and was going to bet river if I checked. I for sure think betting that river is the better option as the hand was played. Not sure if I should have went for a more value-sized river bet, like 80 to 120 to secure the call, but in total for this day i didn't get much filming and i apologize for that but we're in this session for 520 out for 830 with a total profit of 310 dollars